Hey, how's everybody doing, Brother Phil here? Wanted to come on and share a uh, word or two with you guys. Um, so, I was watching a video, um, Brother was talking about, um, he was saying um, how to be prepared for the rapture of the church. Um, with today's modern Christianity, um, everyone's ready for the rapture. But if you look closely and not blind yourself, but try to open your eyes, when you examine the Bible, first of all, a lot of the people in the church don't believe in the rapture. And a lot of people um, don't teach their congregation a lot of churches don't teach their congregation about the rapture of the church. Um, so this this gentleman, um, this brother in Christ, was preaching that uh, if you are born again, um, or if you if you are a Christian, inwardly or outwardly, it doesn't matter, but both, um, you're going to be raptured. Um, a lot of times people are right when they say something in general, but when you closely examine what they're really trying to say, then they become wrong. So Jesus wouldn't have had to say, pray that you can escape. Now remember, Jesus was talking, and this is in Luke 21. Um, 36 and he says pray that you can escape the things that are coming first of all he's talking about the tribulation period okay so he's talking to his disciples at this time so he's saying pray that you can escape now why would he have to tell that to the disciples he would just tell them oh, yo at this time you'll be ready because you're, 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 you're saying you're a Christian. In biblical sense, just because you say you're a Christian doesn't mean you're a Christian. But in 21st century, um, 21st century, if you say you're a Christian, then you're a Christian. So the shock during the time of the rapture is going to be what happened. Why didn't we all go? So in the Left Behind movies and other Christian movies, you know, Thief in the Night, everyone is saved. Everyone, everyone is raptured. Every Christian is raptured. While in reality, if you read the first three chapters of the book of Revelations, it doesn't, it doesn't say that's the case. As a matter of fact, the Church of Philadelphia seems like a small remnant. Um, because why you live in today's society and we get further and further away from when Jesus was here, of course we are, we're 2,000 years later, but now time is speeded up. Things are speeding up. And the world is getting smaller. The world is coming together as a one. The world is coming together in every department from the media, media collaborating together as one media, religions collaborating together as one religion, economic system coming together as one economic system. So the further away we get from Christ, the day he, when he was walking the earth, um, the further away we get from the original message that Jesus left. The first thing Jesus said and the first thing John the Baptist said was to repent. That is no longer taught in the Christian circles. And Jesus said it himself, unless you repent, you will likewise perish. 
So if Jesus is saying that, then you would have, if you were Satan, you would have to divide what Jesus was saying. In other words, divide and conquer even the word of God. So I hear people say, well, do I follow, we follow Paul's gospel, we follow Jesus' gospel. It was funny how in Colossians, in Corinthians, excuse me, how Paul even said that. Do I follow Paul? Do I follow Apollos? Do I follow Jesus? Was Jesus divided? So what are you following? To me, the message is still completely the same. They just a, a, attacked it from a different direction. While Jesus was saying, he was saying, okay, so you following the commandments, thou should not murder. Do you hate your brother? Thou should not get a divorce or uh, commit adultery. But do you look at the women at the store? Do you lust after people that you shouldn't be lusting after? You know, thou should not steal. Do you steal pens from your workplace? So Jesus was defining what sin is, it's eternal. You have to catch it from the inside before it works its way out. You have to have a change of heart. So when when we say is all Christians are going to be raptured, well, the Bible says <coughs> Jesus, well, actually Paul says, he, Jesus is coming back for a church without spot or blemish. Now, before people get sad and say, well, uh, I will never make it, because I'm just worthless and I can't, you know, just be, before you do that, because I was at that point before in my life, <clears throat> when you do that, you're saying that God cannot take that sin away from you. Um, and in Malachi chapter 3, verse 2, it's asking a question, who shall stand? Who shall stand at his appearing? So when Jesus comes in the clouds, the rapture's church out, who should stand? Who's going to be standing in the clouds with Jesus? And it said, and then it makes this point, which I think mo I haven't heard anybody use it but me, um, that Jesus is the one who purifies, who cleanses. But see, it's not a one-shot deal. It's not, oh, I'm going to say the sinner's prayer. Oh, you're a Christian now. Wow. Now go and live, you know, and do what you normally do but God loves you that's not what God is calling us for God is calling us for a life change that's why I say you're new creatures indeed all things have passed away all things become new that's why it says you must be born again if you really think about that being born again doesn't mean you're still the same person you're born again you're born differently you have a different nature now not saying we not you know won't sin, but the thing is, don't make a practice of it. It's not a lifestyle anymore for you. You're set free. And then people, if you read the Bible carefully, people are reading and nitpicking the Bible, where where it says, "Shall I should I sin that grace may look good?" People people have a ministry of struggle, of the struggle of sin. It's not even biblical. It's not biblical to just, oh, I'm struggling and sin. Be, you know you, okay, let me say this in a nice way because we're living in the 21st century. People are living in the fence. You know you're going to hell even if you struggle, right? I, and, I, and I don't want to seem really um, like I have no compassion. But you do know that if you sin if you're if you're living in sin you're going to go to hell that's why he says he says pray that you can escape he says be ready for at an hour that you think not the son of man coming how can you be ready do you realize that most men and women agonize in sin because sin is corruption that 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 lives are so depressed I was so depressed when I was I had um, various, you know, um, sins that was besetting me. Just I couldn't shake it, and 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 my and I felt like I every time I did it, um, God was disappointed with me. And, and 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 the thing is, people say, "Well, you're not supposed to feel that way." Why? 
why wouldn't you supposed to feel that way? That's that's your conscience. That's your conscience telling you you're not supposed to be doing that. So a lot of times we're living in the 21st century. Even Jesus said that many will be offended because of me. Many will be offended in the last days. Offense will be a big problem in the last days. That's why you can't preach to anybody. The only time you're going to be able to preach to somebody is when you disappear. So you carry your in right now it is to is to get ready. Get before the Lord, clean yourself up, and stop sinning. What did he say to the woman that caught in adultery? Go sin no more. What did he say to the man, paralyzed man, they leapt through the roof? I believe this it's probably a couple of the guys got. But one of the guys, he says to them, he says, get up and walk. And then he said, which is easier to say, get up and walk or your sins are forgiven you? Because they can't see the sins being forgiven, but they can see them get up and walk. And then Jesus says, don't, he says, sin no more or something else is going to come worse than this. So what was his message? To repent. His message was to repent. And once again, his message was, unless ye repent, you will likewise perish. Per repent means a daily lifestyle. First of all, you don't have to repent until you need to repent. But the daily lifestyle that you live in when you pick up your cross is, is to live through the power of the Holy Spirit. Is to live um, where you, you, you know, you can sin. You can I mean you can fall. It says that in First John chapter 2. He says, I write this to you that you sin not, but if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. Our our tensions is not to sin. It's not to, oh, I'm look at me, I'm a Christian, I'm sinning. Oh, help me, I'm so helpless, you know. I'm sorry to say this. I, I can see the numbers drop down when I'm saying it, but that's not what God wants us to do. That's not God, that's not our lifestyle. Our lifestyle is not to sin. I think people have been trained to 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 not listen to the truth. I mean, we've been trained. If you got an option, if you're sitting in church, your pastor start talking, you just don't come next week. But if you're sitting on a YouTube video or a Facebook or Instagram video and the person's talking the truth, you just turn it off. I mean, I... It, and, and I admit, in this video, I am seeing kind of harsh, but I, I think it's because I think I'm, I'm I'm saying until the rapture, people are not going to very much listen to this message. They're not going to listen to this message because I'm not being gentle and loving and kind enough. You just check another video out. But and I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just saying people can't take the truth. Even though the truth will set you free, they can't take the truth. You know how many kids their parents told them, don't be going out and hanging with these gang members and don't be just out and about and they get killed. I have a, a ex-girlfriend whose son got killed. I'm pretty sure I know how she is. She probably was warning her, her son not to do this and do that. I'm pretty sure a lot of people that I know um, their sons, were, I mean, they warned their sons, they warned their daughters not to do this or that, and they did it anyway, and they're dead. But I also know where I've warned my kids, and they come back and say, yeah, you told us that that, that would happen. You told us that we're not, we shouldn't do that. Um, they don't, and then sometimes they still don't learn, especially people who do drugs. I mean, it's hard to, to Drugs is addictive, you know, and and it's not something people can beat very f good, easy. You know, a lot of times people get away from the drug and then they come right back to the city or town that they're in and accidental overdose because they haven't really done the drug. You know, and, and you know, and, and people don't... It, the analogy is bad, probably. By analogy, is probably bad, but... You know, people are not going to listen to you about the rapture of the church until it happens. You know, I, I'm pretty sure I get a couple of laughs from people that I knew back in, in the, on the street. And they probably, this dude did flip. But then when it happens, they'll remember, hopefully, um, what I was saying. Hopefully, I'll be in the rapture myself. 
I'm not afraid of make not making the rapture, you know, because I, I see the things happening, you know, and God is that, you know, getting close to God is the main, main deal. Okay. Anyway, um, you know, God bless you guys. I'm going to try to be doing more videos, especially on YouTube. Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't know what else to say, but you know, you, you be ready. Um, for at an hour that you think not, the Son of Man is coming, and He's coming back with His reward. And and at one point, every eye shall see Him, and they're gonna find out that God was God, you know. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people who who end up dying find out that Jesus was the ultimate way. Some people might be, you know, confused that when, when they pass away and they end up going to the wrong place, they might still be conf confused. I don't know, you know, but um, for the most part, most people should know that God was, you know, Jesus came in the flesh and that's basically it. Anyway, uh, I'm going to talk to you guys later. I'll see y'all later. Bye.